everybody. Welcome back. My next guests are both legends in their fields. One is an Emmy award-winning documentarian, the other a Tony award-winning actor. They've teamed up for the new film, Benjamin Franklin. Please welcome back to The Late Show, Ken Burns and Mandy Patankin. <laughs> There you go. Oh, that's so high. A full house. That's exactly right. You're back. Good to see you both. Nice to see you. Ken, welcome back. Thank you. Manny, welcome back to Broadway. Oh, my <laughs> God. I'm telling you, this is the first time I've been in a theater since the pandemic started. Oh, seriously? I, wow. I tell you, I, it's really... <laughs> it's a nice feeling, uh, isn't it? Thank, thank you all for bringing me back to life. <laughs> oh, God. Now... Uh, Y'all, oh my God. y'all have been working for how long? You guys have been working on this, uh, this uh, the documentary on Benjamin Franklin. I think two hundred and fifty years. years. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> it only and feels. Like how long that. have you guys been working together on it? Because uh, spoiler alert: Mandy voices Ben Franklin in right. this. Spoiler how long? alert. So yes. we've been working virtually for a year and a half, or yeah. a little bit more. Yeah. And tonight is the first time we've met person to person. So in the dressing room. Really? That's lovely. Zoom. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Any surprises? Is, is somebody taller than you thought? Well, I, I, uh, his stature is gigantic. So <laughs> He's more of a mensch <laughs> than I thought he was. No, Kent, why, why did you choose Benjamin Franklin? It's a two-parter. Why Benjamin Franklin as your latest subject? And why were you inspired to have Mandy voice him? So, you know, the, the subjects pick me. Uh, they're not um, a co- conscious decision. It's the way somebody... Use a Ouija ends... board or something <laughs> yeah, like that? The way, kind of. You know, you have an idea in your head and it drops down to your heart and you say, okay, we'll do it. Mm-hmm. He's the most accessible of founding fathers. He's the oldest, the wisest. He is a, the only American known throughout the world for his scientific discoveries. He's the greatest diplomat in American history, securing the French support that wins the revolution. He's as important as Washington. Know him, know us. He's an editor of of Jefferson's prose in the Declaration in the subtlest but most important ways. He forges the the compromises, some of them tragic, of the Constitution. He's an inventor that he holds all the stuff without patent. He's just irresistible, and he's filled with flaws and contradictions. And that's the important thing. We have in our editing... He's me. (laughs) Yes. So, okay. No difference. (laughs) <laughs> right, so, right, exactly. A man of accomplishment, like Mandy. And, um... I say that with all modesty. So, my, my, my youngest... As always. My youngest daughter, uh, Willa, who's, who's here, and I were watching Homeland. She should not have been watching Homeland at age eight. Mm. And I'm covering up her eyes and trying to explain statecraft and spycraft and, and Afghanistan, Russian, and American relations, when I suddenly went, Mandy, Saul Berenson, the character he plays, Mandy should be Franklin. And we have just plowed from, from that moment on, and it was the best choice. I've worked with great people. He has inhabited this man, this human being, in the most loving way. All the humor intact, all the pathos of the creation of the United States, all the contradictions of slavery and other things. Mandy, doing uh, Franklin, vo- voicing Franklin here, as you dove into this, you know, a real person, but a character in a sense, what did you learn about him that you didn't know? First of all, his humor, like you. Who would we be as a nation without guys like you and Benjamin Franklin? (laughs) Very similar. (laughs) I mean, come on! (laughs) Really? (laughs) It's, uh... Well, that's all we have time for. Thanks, (laughs) fellas. Did I do it exactly, exactly the way you said Exactly as I wrote it. Exactly as I wrote it. Okay, good. <laughs> but but then, then, then his humor and then, you know, his genius, how to invent things. Then I start to learn as I'm going along and I'm going, I love this guy. I, lo- I can't believe I'm getting to be this guy. He invents the library. He doesn't want any patent for it. He just gives it away. He invents a lightning rod. He gives it away all over the world. Doesn't want anything for it. You know, he's a printer. He wants to bring people into this country. He, he has... He's a ladies' man, which I'm not. 
you know, I I wanted to be like him in my, <laughs> in, you know, in my big years. I had a buddy of mine, my dearest friend, Bob Nitches. We used to sit at the bar and we'd practice. And I'd say, I, I can't, I don't know how to, I don't know how to ask her. Let's practice. I'll be her, you be you. And it just tanked every time. <laughs> and I, Keep in mind this, this right there. Ladies this man. guy was <laughs> raking him in raking like that. <laughs> Breaking them in. So wait a second. We got we have we have we have a clip we have a clip here of, of uh, Mandy as Franklin. Before we go to this clip, can you tell us what's happening? What's yeah. he talking so, about in France so here? So the revolution has started. He's dispatched by the Continental Congress to to go to France and try to get money, materiel, and soldiers and a fleet. And it's going to be the most difficult diplomatic mission in the history of the United States. But he's the most famous American for having tamed lightning. So he's. He's this rock star in, in France. You want to sleep with him? love him. him. Yes. <laughs> and and here, here's some of the ways that was expressed. <laughs> the clay medallion of me was the first of the kind made in France. And the numbers sold are incredible. These, with the pictures, busts, and prints, of which copies upon copies are spread everywhere, have made your father's face as well known as that of the moon. The king, Louis XVI, became sort of slightly annoyed and amused by the cult of Franklin. He had a chamber pot with an image of Franklin put on the inside of it, just as a way of saying, enough already. <laughs> That's one of the things that people forget <laughs> about Franklin, is that, well, of course we know who Benjamin Franklin is. We tend to think of like, oh, Washington and Lincoln. Right. but. For, say, say, the first century of the United States, there was nobody who compared to the fame of Benjamin Franklin. Nobody, nobody. Yeah, he that's was known why, all over the world. Because he had tamed lightning, he saved lives. He, he was as important as Isaac Newton a century earlier in that century, and, he, and he's the only person who could have done it. His son was older than Thomas Jefferson and John Adams and Patrick Henry and James Madison. So he is the wise old man that understands he's the person who's able to forge the country together. I mean, he is as responsible as Washington for us being here, for us being us and the U.S. And what were the three countries, this is my teacher, what were the three countries that wouldn't sign the Declaration of Independence and uh, the, the Constitution? The state. The state. The state. The yeah. three well, states. It, it was one state that held off. Twelve of the 13 uh, co colonies signed up for it, but one uh, took a few more days, New York. Uh, to, to decide to sign it. But they also didn't want to because they didn't oh, want to give up the slavery. Oh, so, con so the that's constitution. the Constitution. So he's there. They're the, the, the hot. Give me a break. Okay. You know, so. <laughs> so the, there's the Constitution. The, the Declaration Const is the one where Franklin put the treasure map on the back. Okay. <laughs> yes, right. Oh, right. No, the treasure map is on the front. Okay. And, and Jefferson oh, sends. Oh, you got him. it wrong. Jefferson. <laughs> I made a joke. Yeah. <laughs> Jefferson. Jefferson sends the first draft to Franklin, right? And he says, we hold these truths to be sacred and undeniable. Oh and Franklin goes, uh-uh, this is beautiful, but we're in the Enlightenment, buddy. These are self-evident truths, like the sun rises in the east, that all men are created equal, asterisk, Thomas Jefferson owns human beings, asterisk, Benjamin Franklin owns human beings. By the time we get to the Constitution, the southern states don't want to join unless their property their slaves are counted for the purposes of representation. And we forge the tragic compromise that creates the United States, without which we would not be together. We'd be warring city-states by the clause that is so horrific, the three-fifths, counting mm -hmm. the black, stolen African slaves as three-fifths of a human being for the purposes of representation and apportionment. And that gave the South undo legislative control until the Civil War. And, and you, don't, you don't let Franklin off the hook oh, for no. that. No, no, no. Franklin, uh, these are tragic compromises that have to be addressed to that. We don't let him off the hook for owning a handful of, of household slaves. It's just as bad to have one as it is to have 100. And yet, unlike the other founding fathers, he moves. He's not static. He, he founds a school for black kids and is startled to discover that they're as apt and prone to learning as white kids. And then by the end of his life, he's leading an abolitionist society and proposes in the new government, the thing that he has created, the first resolution to abolish slavery. Senate ignores this, House votes it down with great outrage, but there it is. Well before the abolitionist movement spreads in the country in the 1800s, Benjamin Franklin has put 
has gotten on the right side, as the scholar Erica Dunbar says, of the, of the question. We have to take a quick break, but when we come back, I will ask Ken and Mandy what learning about Franklin teaches us about ourselves. Stick around. <laughs>